800 mark a couple times this year. Spot me, we'll get it first. I wish I could say that about my. Oh, I only ran <laughs> for 119. I, I run for 100 yards. I'm walking around the crib feeling good. <laughs> Strut around a little bit. I'm telling you, I'm a sponsored hoodie away from having the full attire when I'm playing at the cribbo. Got the bandana, Dreamy bandana, the Spot Me Please controller. I just need a swaggy, swaggy hoodie. Hoodie, if we can get those Jordan 14s on you too, that might put you over the top. Those are the ones. You got to have a fresh pair of kicks, well, man. Well, all you sneakerheads, you guys going to yeah. spend all that money on your shoes. That's the one pair of shoes I wanted when I was a kid. And now that I'm older, you know, I couldn't get them when I was a kid. Those expensive shoes. Yeah. Might have to go out and get those. I'm waiting for them to re-release them. Some of you guys in your sneakers, though, Coltrane. These players, too. Hey, I offered you a pair, but what? I, I wear 12. You're what, 13? Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, you, you got the. You can't curl my toes. You'd have to curl them up. No. Uh, and I'll tell you, this Madden Championship might have been one of the best things that happened to some of those sneakers companies. Because a lot of these younger <laughs> players, they go out and spend one, some coin one, on one. some serious feet. One, one. Check three, check three, check three. I mean, guys like Hollywood, Joel, you know, kids got the fashion on lockdown. Even Ghost. Hey, he's starting to bring it. So first and 10, another first down to the 38 now, two for two. Pressure's off for both of these guys. For Stevie, you, you know, if you can get a win here, you maybe have the opportunity with a Joel loss to finish fifth. And you're wondering, well, why, why is the big deal fifth over sixth? I mean, you're, a big deal. you're down in the bottom. It's, Tell them, Coltrane. <laughs> it's because you might be facing a Michael Skimbo at number three. Yeah, if you can avoid facing Skimbo in an elimination game, I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, we, we give Skimbo all kinds of homage, but it, it's deserved. Nobody prepares better. Number one ranked player in the world for a reason, and he's trying to continue to add on to his legacy, which is very important to him. And anybody that's getting in the way of that is going to have their hands full. Almost hauled in at the one-yard line. Warfield had it, but couldn't get that second foot down. Well, let's be real for spot me and Stevie Stevie's in college spot me you know he had to take some PTO some time off of work to be here and the, the extra rack is, is pretty nice I'm not turning it down as Look. McKinnon walks in for spot me I'm telling you Scott I've played some games for the stacks it, it, it gets intense dude you're thinking about it so I'm thinking of different things you could spend that money on I'm still. I'll go back on my rant. I, I still need. I still need to stack a rule on the, on top of the council. Thousand catch, a smash and grab. The problem is you can't let them just leave the building. No. With all this cat, so maybe we hold on to the cat. But at least it's there for the nostalgia. It's in front of you. I'm gonna pest the league ops about that all, all year long. I'm with it. I'm ready for it next season. I, I want cash money on top of the council. And if you don't speak Bostonian, that's console, the Xbox that these guys are playing on. My, I'm going to be your, I'm gonna be your translator thing. Here's from now the on. thing, though, is you go back home to Boston, and those goons back home, they give me a hard time. They, they, they think my accent's gone. They yeah. said, you, you lived in Florida too long. You went and lived in Louisiana for a while. To, to them, it's, it's not even thick anymore. They said my accent's pathetic. Well, I'm in South I Carolina. You get me, you get me at a family reunion, man. I'm full on, y'all. Well, that's the <laughs> thing is, I lived in Louisiana for a few years yeah. when, when I first started trying to work with EA and getting involved in the company, and I started saying y'all and all that stuff. And I'll tell y'all that Stevie J is on his horse. Get on your horse, Stevie. Push down, push down bounds at the 17. Let me just give you a little credit, man. You talk about hard work. Literally started at the bottom in Madden. Thank you, Scott. I mean, to, to be right now, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of folks want to know, hey, how do I get to doing what you guys are doing? You know, I went, I went the broadcasting round. I did all that kind of stuff. You just grinded, man. You just grinded all the way up. Earned every bit of it, man. It's, and it's a pleasure to sit here for each and every game, my friend. Thank you, Scott. And I, you, you know what? We, we talk about it and... It's the same. I got the same thing as these players. Is you get some opportunities, you learn to, you know, set some goals for yourself. And when you're passionate about it, and 
you're setting goals about things you're passionate about, they're a lot easier to accomplish. And once you learn that formula, it'll help you a lot. And it helped me a lot, and it's great to see it help a lot of these younger players as well be able to live their dreams and do what they want to do and chase their passion. Yeah, if you want to do a special you, thing. if you want to do what we do, start your own tournament, stream it on online, you know, broadcast some games, maybe you'll call some mutt head tournaments, maybe you'll get out there and call a, a challenger event. Here's the, I'll put this in perspective. How about our boy Holden? Yeah. The young man, he came out of nowhere. He's just been delivering crazy ultimate league content. And I'll tell you what, I've already sent several emails sure. saying I want this kid next to me at one of these events because you know what, if someone shows that type of passion and initiative, you're going places. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm okay if you're already looking for a replacement for me. Touchdown, Stevie. No, oh, wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> Coltrane goes, I go. <laughs> I like that. And I'm just saying, man, can you imagine Holden and Donnie and the nerve cave, as you like to call it? Those goons would come. The stats would be coming in like be <laughs> clockwork out here. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, you know, you gotta go. You gotta go do it. No one's gonna give you anything. You know, you, you gotta go out there and earn it. Good spot. That goes for Madden. That goes for life. That goes for anyone. Seven seven here. Two oh three to go. Let's get a game update. Well, guys, Blocky not letting that first round by in the playoffs slow him down. He is on the board early against Prodigy, up 7-0, two minutes left in the first quarter. Well, he continues to roll over there for Blocky. You, you gotta like Blocky. He's all about his business, Cole. We, when Adrian sat down with him, he said he said some really cool stuff that, you know, he's just trying to surround, pe surround himself around people that can help him accomplish his goals, get better at the game, and it's like we talked about. He's got his own goals, and he's focused and locked in on them, and he's all business when it comes to accomplishing those things, and you got to respect it. And it's took him from being, you know, like we talked about, the 16 seed, a guy that barely made it into Ultimate League, got in by the skin of his teeth, needed some help. Now he's got a first-round buy, a guaranteed $20,000. Doesn't include the 1000 a win. That's off to Abbott Lopez. It got off to a strong start, maybe hit some bumps in the road in his cross-divisional games. But he's pretty much owned that Division A of the Elite Conference. Went out there and had an opportunity and got the work done. I was nervous about Blocky. You know, down in Miami, showed up to the Dolphins with which I thought were unregulated short shorts. I mean, we got to have something in the rule books about how long your shorts have got to be if you get out there and play some John Madden football. And I was nervous. He was coming out to Cali. You know, we got some warm weather out here, and I'm glad he's gone with the sweatpants. Hey, sweatpants. Well, you want to talk about classic Madden attire, Coltrane. You show up to the Madden Challenge back in the day, and the way that worked was there would be a big tournament at all the NFL stadiums, about 200, 250 people. You walk up, you play, and the winner of all the tournaments would play in a a big tournament for like a hundred grand. And you'd stand in line next to the person you want to play. If you were standing in line next to someone that was in sweatpants, a t-shirt, sandals, and they had a towel to wipe their hands, like one of those small hotel oh, yeah. towels of cloth, you knew you were in for some help. That's real Madden attire right there. And then if they throw on a bandana or a do-rag, they got the, the football team hat to get about it, you're in trouble. You, you had to be able to ju judge the players by their attire. And then, yeah, look good, play good. Of course, it goes the opposite way too. You, 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 you comfortable. You go out there and you ever, uh, you know, you play some pickup hoops and you look at this guy and you're like, all right, he's got the Jays on. This guy looks like he can hoop. You know, he's he's gone out to the mall and he's hooked himself up. <laughs> the high socks. And, you, and, you, and you're like, okay, I'll take this guy. I'll take this guy on my team. He's terrible. You've been on those sides too. As McKinnon walks in once again for spot me. 14-7. How exciting would it have been if Spotmy could have beat Kiv? Right now, we would just be oh, laser focused because this would have been a win and get in game. Oh, that would have been the what if. That would have been the dream for a caster. A Stevie J versus Spotmy, please, game to see who gets into the playoffs. But I'll tell you what, you had to be happy for Stevie J. We saw him come in to the studio and watch that game between Spot Me and Kid, and Stevie had his eyes glued to the TV. I mean, it, it was a lot going on for him, and 
Well, in those type of situations, you're kind of helpless. You kind of just got to watch and hope. And when it goes your way, it's got to be a great feeling. And you, you got to be happy for Stevie J. Because we, for those that don't know, we've said this story before. He was the guy in last year's Madden Championship where there was the final 32 people playing. He was last tournament. year's blocking on the outside looking in. And it, but he did it. Didn't get the he help, ended right? the season at number 33 when the cutoff was 32. And that's devastating. That's a lot of money. Crazy read right there. That's a lot of hard work. <laughs> that just, I don't want to say it goes to waste, but you don't feel like you get the reward for it. And that's a lot to think about for a year. And for him to take that motivation and turn it into the season he's had this year, I mean, that just shows what type of person he is. And you got to be happy for him. It's again, Herschel ahead for four. You know, he had that emotional speech after he won a challenger event. It's a good speech. In Vegas. You were there. I was there. You were there. And he kind of looked at the at the room at the other competitors and said, none of y'all thought I could do this, and I did it. Yeah, and to, to put that context out there, those challenger events, they're underground tournaments, and they're hell. Anybody could show up to those, so all the top players are usually there. So winning one of those is a huge accomplishment. End of one, 14 to 7. Spot me over Stevie and Blocky with a 7-3 lead over Prodigy. Start of the second quarter here between Stevie J and Spot Me, please. Spot Me with a touchdown lead. Winding down his ultimate lead. Of course, Stevie will be moving on to the playoffs. Not sure if he's going to be the fifth or sixth seed. There are some scenarios still out there to play. Here's the thing. Both of these players, you know they had to be well prepared for this game. I know there's not a lot on the line, but this game, like we talked about, could have easily been a, a win again in situation. So when you talk to these guys before the game, they did a lot of homework on each other. They were they were ready to go, but. Well, their family and friends that are watching right now are saying, okay, spot me, you, you, you get this $1,000. Okay, that's that'll go toward the mortgage. Stevie J's looking to go to grad school, uh, you know, 1000 go a long way there so you don't want to you, you don't want to not ball out here that's for sure don't want to leave money on the table absolutely it's, you know stevie full-time college student he said that, that matted money it, it, it helps on the side you're going to school you're grinding and we, we put it in perspective before you know what what are these games you, you know you take 30 45 minutes play a madden game get a grand oh yeah, okay, sign me up. Yeah, sign me up, but it's easier said than done. And the, the thing that people don't see is, oh, these guys play video games for a living and this, that. They, they, they do do a lot of hard work. There's a lot of research. Yeah, to get to this point, I mean, we talked yeah, about, you know, point. We're, tr we're trying to sound like you're making a thousand bucks in 30 minutes, and, and that might be true, but you put in thousands of hours with, with really no promise of making anything. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing that, it's tough for these players, and it's a, it's a risk to put yourself out there. And you know, sometimes you're going to be in a situation like Stevie, where you may even invest. You throw your hat in the ring, and it doesn't work out. And you know that that's just a good life lesson too. You learn from that, learn a lot about yourself, and it's about life and what you got to do in the future to correct that type of thing from ever happening again. Bunch to the left. Trips tied in. That, that is a real fear for Madden players, Scott. So, you know, yeah. new game every year. And, you, and you, every year it's almost like you don't have to start, start over because a lot of the same principles are there. She stopped with the crispy first down. Uh, a lot of the same stuff's there, but the game changes, and, and there's always that work you need to put in to, to get yourself good again. And you don't know how easy or hard that's going to be. You talked about the hours and hours of work these guys have put in. You form relationships, you form teams. There's the EMB crew. Joke goes, Mustafa Jones drags, CBJ, all of them had big finishes to their Madden 18. And that's a crew that still got a lot of work to do here in the Ultimate League as we start to get close to the playoffs. and. How big is it? And I know when you were coming up and playing, 
having that crew around you, having guys you can bounce ideas off and, and run plays against, that, that's just undescribable how much that helps your development. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a key part to being a good competitive Madden player. And I, I, I know we talk about it all the time. I say it all the time. I hate to compare competitive Madden to MMA, but the crew aspect really is similar to an MMA gym where, where you need to go to a place where you can find guys that you can practice with, uh, you know, work on your game with, bounce things off of, which can be awkward because it's a 1v1 sport. You're seeing guys that you lab with and stuff. You, you might end up playing, or in MMA's case, fighting somewhere down the line. We've seen that happen in, in both sports. And you really got to pick and choose who you're going to practice with and spend that time with. But it's an important aspect if you want to take your game to the next level. It's a necessary thing that these players have to do. And EMB is just one of those crews that those guys have been around doing it for a long time, and there's a reason that four of them were in the ultimate league from that crew. Spot me taking a shot there on fourth and 21. So Stevie's going to take over. 219 to go in the half with an opportunity to come down here and tie up the game. Who was the who was the guys in your crew coming up? Yeah, we had a pretty decent crew. I had uh, Chow. The, the oh yeah, that we well, see all the time. Sure. Chow. I mean, he's one of the best too. People don't realize he was his stick work was top notch back in the day. He is a three time Madden Challenge Regional. He's on. That first season of Madden Nation, he had great accomplishments. He won one of the biggest underground tournaments of all time at that Mega Ball in 05. It was a legendary run and had guys like Young Nephew, who's tied for the record for most Madden Challenge regional wins all time with Big Gene won it five times, I think. Won Madden Nation. You know, guys like one great user, Corey Top. I had a lot of good players around me that really helped bring my game to the next level. And I wouldn't have just got my game with to where I needed to be without them. But just in life, they, they helped me in so much. And those are friends that, you know, I, I still keep in contact with. And till this day, a lot a lot of them are like family. So Joke is sort of the head of EMB. Who, who, was, who was sort of the top dog in your crew? Good question. I, I don't think there was a, a top dog in regards to, like, Joke seems like the vocal leader yeah. and all of that stuff. We were all pretty vocal. and. What not, but I, I think the two top dogs player-wise, the, the guys that you looked up to and you could really test yourself against how to be Chow and Young Nephew. I mean, you and here's the thing, when you get to practice with guys of, of an elite skill level, like say you get to go practice with a Stevie J or a Spot Me Please and, and you play them four or five times a day for, you know, a week, right? The next time you go and play a regular person at Madden, they are going to feel so sweet and easy to beat that it's not even going to be funny because you're just used to these elite level players just giving you hell day in and day out. And that's what it really does help your game. You start seeing that there's levels to this. So it really does help a lot. I remember I would go into a game and I'd think about it. I'm about to play somebody and I'm like, there's no way this guy's about to play me as hard as Chow or Nephew's <laughs> played me for the last few days. And it just does wonders for your confidence. You feel prepared. Such a glad we got to go on that rant. No, no. It, it's a huge, it no, is I a love huge, that. I love that it's competitive matter. And here's the thing, you don't always need to lab against guys that are elite level players. If you can find your friends, it's simple to, you know, get in game and think of things you want to work on. Hey, let, let's work on beating cover three. Go in the game. We don't got to worry about who wins or loses. Let's just get better. You can do that with anybody. Well, my guy Dave Grunfeld sitting over here ready to bring us another game update. Well, guys, we've seen a lot of different ways that guys have scored in this Ultimate League season. We can add another one to the list here as we see a big hitter fumble recovered by Blocky, stumbles into the end zone for a safety. Prodigy is going to take those points any way he can. 7-5, about a minute left in the half. It had to be the third inning there. In a 7-5 game. It's big hitters coming up, though. Look at Stevie J running. Has he broken the ruck, rushing record? You got he crushed Stevie. it. I mean, I think he's far surpassed it. He's surpassed the ultimate league rushing record. And that's cool. Drini was on top. Drini had a great run, pun intended. But Stevie J is coming here on a whole different level. Yeah, his run game is something special, as advertised all year. And that's cool about the yep. ultimate league. The fact that guys get to set records. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. So 
all of these 16 players that took part in this, they're, they're all got a special place in history. I mean, it's like being involved in the first official NFL season for competitive Madden. That's a cool accomplishment. So tied at 14 now with 37 seconds left in the half. Between Stevie J and Spot Me Please. This is sort of the curtain call for, for Spot Me. Stevie J's got the playoffs to look forward to. The only solace is when you've been out here in LA for a couple weeks is, yeah, you're not going to playoffs, but you're going home to your bed. <laughs> you know, even Drake said it. He said, I love you barely. You know, the only thing, one well, of the few things I love is my bed and my mama. A lot of players and staff can get some well-deserved rest after this ultimate league, but it, it's been fun. Wouldn't trade this for anything, these opportunities, Scott. And I, I think the thing that keeps, really keeps, I, I know it keeps me going and it keeps a lot of us going is this is just the beginning. Oh, yeah. You feel like we're just getting started. Competitive Madden is turning into something special. It's, it's only going to get better from here. We talked about how prestigious it is to win a Madden Bowl. Now you got a full season to get to the playoffs, got to grind through. And when someone holds that Madden Bowl belt up, put around your waist, you know you're the champ. Unquestionable, you're the champ. It's got to be a great feeling. So that's, you talk about a set of goals and accomplishing them. That's got to be the ultimate. And you, you know what? Winning the belt, I don't think that's the goal. You set right away. You, you got to start slow. You know, maybe first it's depending where you are. It's let me get good at competitive batting. Let me go to my first tournament. Okay, let me make the online elimination. You know, let me just make strides. Okay, I made online. Let me make it to my first live event. Okay, I'm not, don't rush it. Well, one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, last year, Blocky's highest finish was... I think 30 something in the challenge, which means he didn't, you know, he didn't get to the Got it right here. 33, I think, didn't get it to the, you know, to the live stage. But here is the guy that's come up and now he's he's one of the number one seeds in the whole ultimate league. It's 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 unbelievable as we come to the end of the first half. 14-14, and then I guess Prodigy hit a three-run homer, and now it's eight-seven between him and Blocky. Start of half number two between Stevie J and Spot Me Please. All tied up at 14. Talked about how big momentum is. Stevie J. And you also talked about you had opportunities to maybe run some plays. At least you want to get on film. At least you're going to show out to you know, give your opponent in the future in the playoffs something to think about. Maybe even a fake field goal down the road. We've seen Stevie earlier in the season run a fake field goal and run it successfully. And funny enough, you, you talk to the players after that happened, right? they're just scared to try to block his kick because he's shown it on tape that he's willing to fake it and make you pay for, for that kick block attempt. And QB draw, gets a block. Mariota up the sideline, steps out at the 49. It's a good example of putting something on tape. And, and it's like the real NFL. The, the more, whatever you put on tape, it, it's something that your opponent needs to watch and account for and, and be ready for. It makes them have to do more homework in preparation. We've had a lot of fun this season. I had a lot of fun calling these games. And it's going to be wild getting into the playoffs. We already know who's there. Over on the other side of the conference, that legend conference seems so long ago. Those guys are going to be rip roaring and ready to go. You can believe that. The playoffs is going to be crazy. First ever playoffs of this ultimate league, Scott. All the talent that's going to be there. And, you know, how about Top Madden here? If things hold up the way they are right now, they could have. All the buys, all the buys. Yeah. Problem, Drini. Blocky's already locked it in. Kim's got a chance to lock it in. Yes, Jimbo's the one that 
He can spoil that. It's on him to try to spoil that, and it's going to be difficult because he has some point differential he needs to make up. It, it could easily, that's a good point, be an all-top Madden by situation. It's 80 grand guaranteed between those four players. And Donnie was trying to figure out. I think they had to go out and get them one of those TI-85s, those old scientific calculators, put it on a graph, get the coefficient. Uh, Stevie J takes the lead. And, and, you know, we've seen a lot of runners, you know, throughout the season. It, there's no question about it. Stevie J is the, is the best runner we have. But he's proved in key situations that he can throw the football and, and complete it at a high rate. Yeah, he, he sure has. And his stats are good, but when you talk about that, I, I always got to put True Boy up there. True Boy. Oh, he's got incredible stickers. He's got some highlight reel runs that are just, it, it is so fun to watch. And it's my favorite thing, and you see it when these guys get in the open field, is they sometimes just blatantly do stuff on the sticks that I, I know I, I don't have the ability to do it anymore. I haven't done it in a long time. And True Boy constantly doing that. Look at the pick by Stevie. Interception there by Amos. And I, I think it correlates, and I'm going to open up the phone lines here soon. We'll take some calls as we're basically having a, you know, a rap show talking about the how the Ultimate League is set up. But Skimbo, in my opinion, has the best defensive game plan. Drini is the best defensive user currently right now. I'm not saying all time. I'm talking right now. And I'll say Stevie J, he has the best running game plan, the best execution. True Boy is the best runner. Yeah, but you're talking open back, field. Stick work and sure. open field, make guys miss. I can get behind that. And yeah, I like the thing about Drini too is the way he plays defense. It, it's very similar. His whole game plan is very similar to Chow back in the day where he's just pretty basic on offense, good stick work, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, capitalizes on his run opportunities, and then just plays very, very stingy defense. Second and nine now. Stevie looking to go up two scores. Boy, somehow fit that into Jerry Rice, who just snagged that out of midair. It's going to be a third and two. All those numbers, six for six, 72 yards, two touchdowns. Can, no big deal. <laughs> I'm just saying, if he, if he can throw when he needs to. He's throwing it a little bit right there. The elbow time. Look at Spot. It's just Spot. You know, he's out of the playoffs, but not, he's not trying to go down to anybody. He's, he's down 10, but he's still going to try to win this game. That extra rack of row. If you look back earlier in the season between Young Kib and Stevie J when Stevie J broke the rushing record for a single game at 355 yards on the ground, he averaged 13.2 a carry. 13.2. That game was bananas earlier. And the crazy thing about that game, you're talking about Stevie breaking the rushing record. At that time, Kiv, until Blocky broke, had set the passing, passing record, record at the same time. 360 yards. And it was the remember. most entertaining game we've had thus far in the regular season of the Ultimate League. That's a lot of yards in a, a five minute quarter game. You, you know what I mean? You, you're playing these condensed games where you don't get to run a lot of plays, you don't get a lot of possessions. And, that shows what type of efficiency these guys have with the game plans. McKinnon has a seam. Could kick it into another gear and gets it out to the 50-yard line. The lead is 10. Spot me trying to drive down here and cut the deficit. And those were the players, if we were honest with ourselves here in the this side of the conference, in this elite conference, there was three players that I thought, well, let's put it four. I'll be honest with myself. I'll put it four out there that I thought might miss the playoffs. Stevie J was one. Spot Me was one. And Prodigy and Blocky. These are the guys that are playing right now. But Blocky just came on, started the season, winning four straight, and no one in that division could catch him. Yeah, I think Blocky, 
you had a feeling, though he was one of the underdogs, when you talk to the players, though, they, they, they never really had him in the bottom two. Everybody knew what he brought to the table. Anyone that's played against him knew it was going to be a tough game. I think the biggest underdogs you would hear from when you're talking to the players were Stevie and Prodigy. Let's go for a game update. Oh, guys, Blocky, you're talking about him over there. He's making plays over here. High ball, back at the end zone. That's a touchdown. Up 14-8, about a minute and a half left in the third. No longer a baseball score, Scott. Yeah, I appreciate that. Finally putting some points up on the board. Who's your baseball team? I'm a longtime Cubbies guy, and I'll tell you why. I'm not a bandwagon guy. Grew up in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was about five minutes from this place called Duncan Park. And the Spartanburg Phillies played there. There was a second baseman by the name of Ryan Sandberg, who would eventually become a Chicago Cub. And of course, my dad was a pilot with American, and he was based up in Chicago. So just fell in love with Ryan Sandberg and the Cubs. A lot of history with that organization. I would love to go to Wrigley Field at some point. I've never been there. That's a cool bucket list item. It was Mariota getting free. He's going to pick up more. Nice shot by Spot Me. Getting into the red zone down at the 13. Snow beast Mariota. I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to task our boy Tony with, with some point, and I don't need it by the end of this game, but I'm curious who, what player overall, it doesn't need to be from anybody's team, is the MVP. <laughs> oh, ooh, nice run there by Spot Me. Makes it a field goal game. Who do you think is the MVP of the Ultimate League? I, I think you got to have Mariota up there. Urshel Urshel Walker. Walker. Derrick Henry. <laughs> Bosa. I mean, Bosa's. I, I, if I had to pick a. how many sacks he's made. If I had to pick a wideout, Paul Warfield. Warfield. From the Dolphins, the legend. We've seen Larry Wilson make plays in the secondary. Mel Renfro has done it in special teams and on defense. And speaking of special teams, don't forget about Tyreek Hill, that pro ball oh, addition. Yeah. There's been some constants, guys that you know you're going to have to deal with. And if we can't leave Anthony Barr out of discussion. Anthony Barr. And I like I like that aspect. If I was a fan at home watching, and I do it from here at the caster desk, is I pay attention to what players these guys are using. I'm constantly trying to figure out who I should put on my mud team or my salary cap team. And you know, you get a good idea of that just watching these guys. Because you know they've put in careful research and what players they want to use. And well, quarterbacks and running backs in this league have been consistent. You know, we've seen some outliers, the, the Michael Vicks. We saw Randall Cunningham with, with Tweez, but and you saw some Deshaun Watson maybe on a few rosters, but it's it's really Mariota and Wentz. Those, those are your options to get the job done. And because, let's be honest, sometimes Vic, he, he's hard to handle unless he's in the hands of the right uh, controller. Even Drini bailed on him after the first couple losses to the season. At the end of the third, 14 to eight, Blocky over Prodigy. And then Stevie J. And spot me, please, in a three point game at the end of the third. in the palm of my face. Oh, what would they do next? They do what they do, boss. That's my fish guy. Let it rain. Who is it? My fish guy. Who? Augie, my fish guy. Fish guy? What fish guy? It's just my fish guy. Chill. He's on Tokyo time anyway. Your phone privileges are revoked. Madden yeah. NFL 18 oh plays own. best on Xbox One X. <laughs> Here
here in the star of the fourth. And speaking of guys that are trying to take our job, here's Michael Skimbo in the booth to join RG and I. And we got a big one coming up next. Young Kiv, you got some points to overcome. And what's your thoughts going into that one? Uh, you know, I got to win by 16, but I just like that there's a chance there. So that's just the main thing. I got something to play for. So that's about it. Well, we're going to lock in on this fourth quarter between Stevie J and Spot Me Please, two guys that were both in your division. What can you tell us about Stevie J? He's one of the guys that you never want to face. <laughs> uh, going in the tournament, I actually thought he was going to be a guy that I really need to get my two wins from, and now he's probably the guy I don't want to play the most. And that's the possibility. You could finish at the three seed. He could finish at the six. That would make a heck of a, a wild card round. Yeah, but I played him twice, and I, I figured some stuff out. And if we play, I'm ready to play him. What about Spot Me, please? That's you know got to be disappointing. He's a guy that you thought had a good shot at the playoffs and just came up short. Couldn't yeah. make the plays. Yeah, Taylor's great every year. Like every year he plays this game, he's really good. It's just really unfortunate that he was in a really tough division. Stevie J going ahead again. 18 carries for 131 yards, and that's just a so-so game for Stevie. Yeah, his run game is unbelievable. As soon as you think you have run defense, kind of like problem, then he just breaks the big one and you're just demoralized. So hanging out with Skimbo here for the fourth quarter. Joining myself and RG and there he goes. This is what we look like. You know, we're just locked in. Had a chance to get sticky there. But you had some success against Stevie J. You probably had the best run defense against him all. All season long, just yeah. didn't come up with the dub. Yeah, going in that game, I was going to freestyle on defense, and I felt like I figured out a lot of stuff that game. So I, I, if I play him again, I feel like I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm ready to fight. That's what I've been doing all tournament, and I'm going to keep doing it. Skim, this offense is super popular online. You see a lot of people that they, they constantly talk, I can't stop stretch, I can't stop pitch, dive. Mm -hmm. right. Fly in for him. Get, 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 Tell the people at home what to do yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm so yeah, set us up. Knowledge. Without giving without giving away your game plan, give us the basics. Guys, so what would that look like if I tell them what to do and then I play them and then it doesn't <laughs> work? How does that make me look right now? So I can, I'm not saying anything right oh now. My goodness. But you made some adjustments between the first time you met and the second time. We saw some Ray Lewis, some Luke Keekley, okay. and sometimes personnel is a big part I'm of it. I'm going to break it down real quick. I'm, I'm just pressing on cover two. I'm manually moving my corners right outside the wide receiver so they can shoot right through. And then what he likes to do is audible into a shotgun and go inside zone, and it works very well. Then I have to do an adjustment myself to stop the inside zone out of Shotgun. So there's a lot of stuff that's going through my head right now. Oh, big chat. And that just, uh, you know, that's good context for him, though, Skim. It shows the mental chess match that goes on and even the adjustments you have to do during pre play. That's foreign stuff to some people. Call and press coverage, taking the DBs and manually moving them outside their default position to get in better alignment. I mean, those are high level Ooh. things people need to learn. That's that skill gap I tell you guys about. If he clicks on there and holds Y, that's a pick every time with that linebacker. He didn't animate at all. He's got to click on right here. Oh, we've been telling him. Right. Sam. Just yep. click on. That's a pick. Oh, he clicked on late and they put him on the yeah, safety. Put him on Troy Vincent behind, behind him. him. But we've been we've seen a lot of that skimming. We even saw Stevie J in a big play against you. Click on. on we talked about that possession catch. You were in position to win the oh, yeah. game on fourth down. And Thought there was no chance he'd get there. He clicked on and made a heck of a play. Ooh, good. good hit right there by Jabril Peppers. That's going to bring up a fourth and one. I'm what do you do here? You kicking it? Me personally, I take three. Because if I take three and say spot me, goes and scores, I can manage how the clock, I can play extra aggressive. Because then all I need is a field goal to win it. I always think way ahead. So right here, I'm even taking three. I like what you said, though, though about now when you get on the defensive side of the ball, aggressive. you're willing to play more aggressively and really force him to make a play. Because you don't want to get chewed out. So because, you know, Taylor, spot me, can chew you out and score with no time. But you're, you can control. You have three timeouts. You can blitz everyone. You can play so aggressive right now on defense. Like, this might be the, the craziest. It, it should be the craziest adjustments he's made all game should be on this drive right here and try to get a stop. Really take some risks. And plus, if you're like Stevie, who's a ball control guy, and how he's been moving the ball on the ground and not the air, you can give up a quick touchdown and just still be in the best position ever. Yeah, it's almost send the goons. If I stop you, I stop you. If not, hopefully it's just a quick score touchdown. I got enough time to put a drive together. Get in field goal range. You don't need the touchdown. Nope. And he's got a great kicker. First and ten. It's a six-point game with 2.42 left. Spot me trying to leave this building with a that runs worth so good bucks. A cannon. 
Stayed in bounds. Clock's going to keep running. Let's see what Taylor does. Does he take a shot or does he try to dink and dunk and chew this clock? This will be really interesting. Yeah, it's one of those awkward situations. Where an Adam player. Do, do you want to risk trying to score with no time left, but then you don't score and you know you don't get to use your three timeouts? Or and it's really tough for passers out of West Coast because all we have is uh, draw. But with him, he's got plenty of run plays out of this playbook. So Taylor's a, in a very good spot actually right now. West Coast playbook. I, I blame you, Skim. Yeah. <laughs> Wide open is Paul Warfield. <laughs> and Out of bounds, one second. That's huge. That's a big huge. hit because now you don't get to the two minute warning. Big now, hit from Stevie. At this point, I'm thinking if you're Taylor, I mean, if you get a first down at the five yard line, then you'll chew. But right here, you got to take your points, I feel, or even try to score even quick. I don't know. It's a tough situation. Even, you know, even skim in these types of situations, you got to. It's tough. Sometimes you, it, sometimes there is no right thing to do either. It's dependent on how the game's been, how confident you are in your defense. Right here, I'm taking, if I got seven, I'm taking my seven. I'm being up right now. And, you know, for for Spot Me, Draw. this is sort of how his whole season's been. He's had the ball last, oh. chances to win the games, just been unable to do it. He's called draw every time he's come to this formation. Now he's passing the ball. This is huge. Could be a draw again. Nope. He tried to fool him, didn't work. Yep. Nothing there, and here comes a big third and 24, RG. Well, the thing Spot needs to be aware of, too, is like Skim said, you've only shown draw out of there, so you got to think Stevie's going to send some goons to try to blow yeah, that draw exactly. up. You knew the heat was coming if you pass. That's why he motioned his tight end, but it just didn't work. Uh oh, here we go. He's blocking the crib. I like that. A little Skimbo offense, three routes. Hit B, hit B, out. hit B, there you go. Motions up, V I with a playmaker. You gotta hurry up right here because... I hate playmaker. Okay, Stevie calls the timeout. Stevie steps in with a timeout on fourth and two. If Taylor gets stopped here, spot me please, get stopped here. He still has three timeouts so he can still D up and have a ball in a good situation because if he gets turned over this, he doesn't have a lot of field to try to go get. So if Stevie punts it, he only has to go 50 yards. If he, do, if he goes for it, he only has to go like 10. Yeah, you have to go for this. Two yards will... 100%. Give him the first down. You run here, you, you got to pass almost. Yeah, you're passing. Especially good stuff. And he ran this play versus Kiv to get his last seven. And low throw, Warfield. Touchdown, spot me. This extra point will give him the lead. 28-27 with 1.25 to go. So here's the deal here. Who's this kicker? Oh, for spot me? Spot me. For spot me. So here's the deal. He has four miles per hour against him right now, so he's probably not going to kick the ball deep. So Stevie's probably going to get the ball in really good field position right here. Crater. But he doesn't come out onside kick an audible, so it might not be the best. And he's just going to take it out at the 33. Crater and Zerloin. So now Stevie has a good kicker, and he has a four mile per hour win with him. So that's huge right now. So if that was like that versus Kiv, when he got out, he would have made it. So here he has four miles per hour with him, so he doesn't have to get. I mean, he's saving himself four yards now. I love having. What's, what's the, the range? The pool, huh? <laughs> it's something I check when I kick the ball off. It's the first thing I check for down the road. So he needs to get. It's a 56. Who's, who's this kicker again? We said it's. Is it Greg the Leg or, or Prater? I believe he has Prater out there right now. So football outsider 92. They say Prater's good from 38 to 39. So right now he could probably get to the 41 and be good. Has to kick it perfect, but probably the 41 instead of the 38. So that would be a, my opinion. 57, 58 yarder to yeah. win it. Got to get down there first. Second and eight. Mariota takes off. I'll tell you what, it's completely irrelevant, but Stevie just continues to add to his rushing record here in Ultimate <laughs> League. I don't know if you know Stevie. That he said it. He said oh, the way past it. Yards. I knew he was on pace. Yeah, Drini had like. 1,427 yards, and he smashed that. Dude surprised everyone here, probably except for himself. He probably knew That's what he had. Well said. Third and three, Mariota. Throws it outside, oh almost so picked off, I'm but there so is lucky. Jerry Rice, the GOAT, at the 45. Oh, and that is your needed so moment of the game. For sure. <laughs> I need it. That is the needed moment of the game. Wow. The needed moment of the game. Huh? Spon <laughs> we, 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 we say it all the time when we play pickup games. The needed moment of the game. Walker can't get away from 
Vincent. This is huge. He needs probably three yards here, and he gets it. Instead of wanting six, he only needs three now. This is huge. Oh, he's passing. This is it. Second and nine. Does he take off Tempo to the bat? air. Not enough. Got to be quick, and there's oh. Ingram. Oh, he it. He white caught it instead of A catching it. He always Spot, he's loving it. I mean, he got he's had that route all there. season long to Ingram. I'm having a flat. He could have just eight caught it. He yeah, white caught it. Similar situation. Flashback. I'm having a flashback head. right yeah. now. Oh no. It's all right. Do you run the ball here with one timeout? You only need three. Does, he doesn't know the win though. Probably. He thinks he's got to get the first. He thinks he needs to get. He needs to get way past that 40. Yeah. 38. He doesn't though. It's all about what he feels comfortable with as well. Oh, that's a dot. Doesn't even matter. Does it? Doesn't matter. To the 31. It's a 48 yard from there. Spot me. We'll use a timeout. Could have been a thousand dollar hot one right there. Now he just doesn't need to pull his ghost right here. Shout out to my boy Ghost, but he can't be missing a field goal right here. Hey, Ghost, Ghost finally got him a game-winning field goal earlier in the season. So, so I, feel, I feel bad. We give Ghost a hard time for the missed field goal. He's I been feel balling. Like he's improved it. He's the, been balling. He's improved. And he's it been a lot. blocking kicks. And I, I like the thing. I, both you and him talked to me about it separately. Is Getting the good kickers, not only for the field goals, you need that on special teams for the, for the kickoffs. It's everything. It's so much. People have been pooch kicking, and you come out outside kick, you're getting the ball to 35 or 40 on that. With the big kickers, if you don't give up the kick return, they're getting the ball to 20 or 25. Yep. That's 15 yards. And on a defensive Madden, I feel like, that's huge. Yeah, 15 yards is a big deal. you got to fight for every inch in this game. Third and two. I had two kick returns for spot. Hands it off to Herschel. That's going to be the spot. We'll say it's about, I've been waiting for you to take one back. It, it's only a matter of time. Took you long enough, man. It's only a matter of time. It's going to be a 41 yarder. By the way, Blocky wins 14 to 8 over Prodigy. Good momentum going into the playoff for Blocky, the 16 seed, who really shocked everybody with his performance. But here comes a chance for a game winning field goal. It's worth $1,000, folks. 41 yards for Stevie. Perfect. No. It's outside the accuracy. It's going to be right down Main Street. Didn't drift. And he gets the George W. Salt in the wounds for Spot Me. He's heading home. Stevie J headed to the playoffs. And Skimbo, <laughs> that guy over there in the uh, black and yellow, that's not the guy you want to face. No, that's why I need to beat Kiv by 16 points so I don't have to face him. We appreciate you being here with us, Skimbo, for the fourth quarter. It's 30 to 28. That's the final score between Stevie J and Spot Me Please and Blocky. We mentioned 14 to 8. That's the final. How about Blocky coming in as a 16 seed and getting the one? Wow. I mean, what can you say? He needed a problem.